dollars on legal fees trying to get an answer for why they had been given a deadline of last Saturday to clear out, to remove their equipment, to tear down their buildings, to fill up the mine that had been there for 150 years. They called for help, and the Oath Keepers answered that help. And as we've seen in multiple areas, their professionalism, their organization has brought peace to a lot of very tricky situations. So joining us now is Brandon Rapola. Thank you for joining us, Brandon, and thank you for doing what you're doing. Tell us why you do what you do. You've been at the Bundy Ranch as well as this gold mining standoff. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, um, uh, it, it's probably been probably about four years uh, of me, you know, coming kind of understanding of what's been going on in, in our nation. And um, really, honestly, it's a, uh, just a uh, understanding that I need to volunteer and give my time and give my energy to those who are in need um, and, and connecting with the people who see the same same things that are going on. And um, myself, I, I, I served in the Marine Corps from 92 to 96. And, um, you know, I think that my skill sets can be used. And, and still, you know, a lot of us veterans, um, our oath never, never, ever expires. And we still continue to try to do our best to serve our communities however we can. Absolutely. I really appreciate you taking the time off. Uh, I mean, that's going to be a, a tremendous hardship. Take time away from your job or your business to go and do that. Um, Tell us what the situation there at the uh, the mining operation is now. And I refer to it as a standoff. It is not a standoff, as they've made clear at the Oath Keepers site, the, uh, the county Oath Keepers site. This is merely a security operation to make sure that time is given for the owners to have due process there uh, with the uh, BLM. But tell us what happened, because last Saturday, of course, was the deadline. The BLM had laid down this deadline and said, uh, get out, uh, get your equipment out, take your buildings down, fill up the holes in the mine that's been there for 150 years. Uh, that passed and uh, passed peace, peacefully, didn't it? Yes, yes. And, and it's it's something where uh, it was uh, two weeks ago uh, when they contacted the Oath Keepers and, and we had uh, looked over their uh, all of their uh, complaints against them from the BLM and then looked at uh, what they had for information and went through, uh, fortunate enough that the Oath Keepers, they had a legal team to be able to look at it and say, okay, okay this is uh, what they're doing is unlawful. And from that point, we went full operational and were able to go in and occupy um, assist the miners and providing the complete security for them to make sure that they were not to be harmed. Um, there's, you know, they have the threats, the threats against them and their building and, and, as a normal American citizen, you know, uh, who's out there, the everyday person who's blue collar to, uh, you know, the rancher, the miner, to the logger, you know, uh, myself, I have a concrete company. I mean, we're just, you know, we we work for every day. We have our families. We have, you know, we're, we're your neighbors and your, your friends next door. Absolutely, and, yeah. Uh, it's just simply they were being pushed around and, and – you know, I, I know nothing about ranching, and I know nothing about mining, and but I do know what's right and wrong and having some sort of moral ethic to it. Um, Absolutely, and that's the key thing. That was the key thing at the Bundy Ranch was I saw neighbors come together to stand with neighbors and say, we don't like what you're doing here. You're being violent with people. You're, taking, you're running all the ranchers out of business. But it was really the violence that had uh, taken place the previous couple of weeks, the fact that they had attacked people with dogs, with tasers. They'd attacked uh, a lady from behind. Uh, they were pointing sniper rifles at people. The neighbors said, this is enough. We want this to stop. Now, they made it very clear at the Josephine County uh, Oath Keepers uh, website. They said, this is not a standoff with the BLM. We are not promoting any confrontation with the BLM. This is a security operation for the protection of constitutional rights. And that's the important thing, is that we see these bureaucracies over and over again writing their own laws, do, being their own police, accusing you and taking you to their own courts. That's what the fundamental problem is, and it is far beyond even the uh, BLM. We have organizations that are doing this throughout the government. The EPA is doing it. The IRS has done this for a very long time. Virtually every bureaucracy in the federal government has been given a free license by the Congress to do whatever they wish, and that's the fundamental problem, I think. You know what, sir? I, I can't agree with you more. This is why... Myself, uh, you know, it, it as being serving the Marine Corps, like I said, as security forces uh, overseas, and then also a scout with Light Armored Recon Battalion, and you look at, you know, your buddies, your friends, and, and you know, you, you're you're standing for, you start understanding the the Constitution, you start understanding what this uh, 
what America has, what it was built on. But then you come home and, you know, you work, you figure, trying to figure out to fit in civilian life. And then you start developing it. You know, I'm 40 years old now and I'm self-employed. And during this time, I look at the way the bureaucracies work. They're not in the American citizens' favor. They're in for their own. And, and as you, I was never, honestly, sir, I've never, ever been interested in politics, except for the last three or four years where I've just had enough and I realized I have to get involved. And Well, um, as the saying goes, uh, if you're not interested in politics, that doesn't mean they're not interested in you. The politicians absolutely. are very interested in you. And if we had more people who would, like you, Brandon, stand up for uh, their fellow man, to stand up for principles, we wouldn't have these kind of problems because, as Clive and Bundy pointed out, every time people stand up for their rights, stand up with their neighbors for their neighbors' rights, then that improves. And we've seen that happen over and over again. Where it doesn't appear to work is when the government is able to come in and successfully divide and conquer, to say to people, uh, this doesn't concern you because this guy is a rich rancher. You were at the Bundy Ranch. I was at the Bundy Ranch. Is Clive and Bundy rich? <laughs> Absolutely not. And then that's, you know, when I'm in the hole, every time I've been in the hole, you're out, you know, I'm not ever seeing what's being said. And then when I, when I, you know, a week and a half, two weeks later, when I get back to life, I'm like, what, who's reporting this, all these lies? And yes, who's exactly. reporting all of this stuff where, the, you know, I, when I was at, being at the Bundy from the, you know, for the time I was there, I, I was very adamant. I wanted to be involved with their personal, not their personal security, but when they go outside and uh, they're out in, uh, in the desert, I want to be there and I want to uh, see what they do and, and, and secure them during that time, but also see what their lives like. I mean, you have 16, you know, you know, teenage boys. And I can't say boys, young men. These are young men who, they do it the old school way. They got chaps. They have the reins. They have, you know, horses. They go out there and they, they round up what they need to round up. And, you know, they tend to the cattle and um, they actually work. There's no complaining. They they do what they got to do. And, you know, they work with their hands. And there's, you know, the, the sad thing is, is you look at the beat up trucks, you yes. know, their home is a <laughs> humble home and yes. their clothes are humble. They're they're. I mean, I, I look at them. I see me. Mm -hmm. And I look at these ranchers, uh, the, the the miners, and I see me. You know, we, you know, I have a, a, a 2002 Dodge diesel, and you know, I don't. And I, you go to the BLM and you look at their new trucks, their oh, new yeah. equipment, their new gear, and I think this is this is what's criminal is when we are overtaxed and over uh, regulated that so much where they're living the high life and they had you know, over 100. Area. They had over 105 vehicles, uh, Brandon, at the Bundy Ranch, as you know. I, I yeah. Clive said it was 105, 107. They counted it. Uh, all brand new vehicles with one person each in it. So you had this yep. ar new army and new cars driving around there. And of course, they were saying this was to protect the desert tortoise, yet they euthanized over a thousand desert tortoises because they said they didn't have the money to feed these desert tortoises. But yes. they had the money Absolutely. to find to fund a private army and uh, of, of uh, BLM agents as well as people who are going to rustle the cattle from the, the Bundys. Hey, sir, it's it's completely uh, um, they they're I mean, it would be a great I mean, if you hear anybody they're like, yeah, I want to work for the government because shoot, you get a high wage and your gear and equipment is top end. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, you I mean, I'm coming from ca talking in the military. Our military doesn't have that. Our United States military, certain units that do not have that type of high end gear and equipment, you know, it's. Yes. You know, it's like sitting and I look at it and I'm like, this is, this is nuts where, um, well, I'm back in North Carolina. I, I got to say back in North Carolina, we did business and a lot of our clients were a lot of small businesses and these guys were going out of business. People couldn't find jobs except for the people who worked for the government. If you worked yep. for the government at the state level, if you worked for the government at the federal level, it was boom time. And you got to yep. look at this and say, what's wrong with this picture? And of course, the common thing that's going on here at the Bundy Ranch, as well as in this mining area, is that all these small businessmen, and that's the way you need to understand what these people are. The Bundys are small businessmen. These uh, miners in this particular situation, the Gleese Mining District, they are small businessmen who have a title that goes back 150 years. They're working under very uh, small scale operations, and the government wants to clear them out. And once they clear all of them out, I think they're going to take these mines and these areas and they're going to turn it over to large foreign corporations. That's what we've seen over and over again. That's what's happening in, in Arizona. Yeah, exactly. In Arizona and in California. And that's that's what's coming up is just, just the same thing as the Bundys. You had ranchers come and explain their story and their history. And I was baffled. 
I, you know, I, honestly, I came there unknown. I didn't know I'm, I was uh, coming as a three percenter coming out of Oregon, you know, and solo. And then, and then seeing that, and that's when I realized I had to, I, you know, there's more things to come. And now, you know, I, I don't know nothing about mining, but to see it, and then you hear those miners that come to us and those families, and there are just, there are hardworking, honest individual people that they, they're coming and saying this, man, I, I was pushed out of my mind X amount of years ago. People from California and out of state, they're saying, hey, thank you guys. Thank you for somebody coming and step, stepping up. And that was kind of my message that I, that was very, that kind of, that was very adamant, my message for the Buddy Ranch. I did a few YouTube videos and telling people, you have to, as a community, come together in your local area. You have to come together as neighbors, and that's the only way that we can stand together. Um, and then from there, if, if you're still getting pushed around, you need to ask for help. People will come. There are, I mean, the, the people that have, that I've met throughout that are from the Bundy Ranch and also here at the Miners, we're, there are a large, not all our veterans, and I tell you what, all those civilians that are out there, they're hunters, they're trackers, they're men of the woods, they're lumberjacks. They are they are people that know those mountains and know those hills, and they're very skilled um, in those environments because of, of being raised in the Northwest or be, those guys that are being raised in the desert. These are these are good, good, hardworking men, but they also have skill sets. But what uh, the next thing is you get a lot of veterans, and these are combat veterans, these are combat MLS veterans, that are sick and tired that we didn't, and we did not at all join and sacrifice our armed forces and watch many of these men have lost their best friends, lost, lost their brothers and sisters due to combat and the, and the, the things that go on in the families to have to endure that, that those losses to come back here and see what this, what the government wants to do to, to our American neighbors. We didn't, I didn't, I know I didn't serve to come back and abuse and turn my head away and let anybody else come and, and uh, uh, any bureaucracy come through and, and stomp on all, all over our citizens. And that's the thing is they don't realize we're not going to piss on the graves of our fallen, fallen warriors from all the way back to the birth of our, of our great nation, just because it's uncomfortable or because it's not my, my business. There's that you can let everybody know that's out there that, there are, are veterans and uh, civilians, and you put us all together as just straight up Americans that will come and assist. And but you have to, you know, through the networking process, you have to get involved with each other and get get involved with others. And uh, after Bundy Ranch, I got involved with the Oath Keepers because I realized that what they stood for it was veterans and law enforcement. We have law enforcement personnel, we have state yes. troopers, there's sheriffs, to all aspects of it that really do believe in the oath, that really do believe in in uh, helping their neighbors and really do believe that they are serving the community. And you are serving the community. What I appreciate, Brandon, is how professional Oath Keepers has been both here and at Ferguson and at the Bundy Ranch. We see that they come in as a calming effect. They have de-escalated things. That's precisely what they did at Josephine County. They said, please do not make any type of threatening phone calls to the local BM, uh, BLM or USFS, as that's the Forestry Service, as it undermines our mission and professionalism, and it's unwarranted. Nevertheless, when there was this rally at the end of last week, it was reported by KDRV that they had someone dispatched, the BLM had dispatched someone from the District of Columbia, from Washington, to talk to the press about that. And as he portrayed it, it sounded like they were closing the offices. He said uh, they did it as a precaution to protect the safety of the employees and the public. So they made you guys sound like you're some kind of a rowdy mob. That's exactly the tactic that the SPLC did last week with their headlines, although when they reprinted excerpts from their interviews in the text, you could see, the text of the article, you could see that clearly nobody was threatening anybody uh, at the BLM from, from the Oath Keepers. Nevertheless, the headlines, the implications are that you're a bunch of rowdy yahoos. We've heard people on the Glenn Beck program uh, describe what happened at the Bundy Ranch as a bunch of rowdy yahoos who are spoiling for a fight. That's not the case at all. It's been very measured, very professional, especially uh, at Ferguson as well. Thank, thank you, sir. Let me let me very also um, make it very clear. It comes from the leadership all the way from the top with Stuart Rhodes himself, and also the leadership from Joseph Rice in this Josephine County and those leaders that are there um, at, in Josephine County that um, um, in that area. But all, in addition to that, um, it, it's it's. These are everybody there is very professional, and those and those teams that have come um, from all the three Idaho three percenters, uh, the uh, militias, individual militia groups from Washington, throughout Oregon, 
Nevada. We have people from Michigan. We've had people Alabama.